In this lesson on the course on Playwright, we will look at the networking features offered by the library. We will look at how we can monitor, intercept, and finally mock network requests. Let's go. Here we have a web application that makes a network request with the user provided key. If no key is provided by the user, then our server responds with an error message saying invalid request. And if we provide a valid key, which in our case is Playwright, the web application sends it off to the server and the server responds with a list of actions that are then displayed in the UI. Now in order to automate this, we have some very simple code which goes ahead and navigates to the action URL, gets element handles for key and load, and then fills in a value and clicks the load button. Finally, it logs out the output of the displayed message onto the console. Now because we're filling in an empty string, we should see the response invalid request and we see that in the UI as well as in the debug console. Now first up, let's look at how we can monitor network requests and responses using Playwright. Now for monitoring, there are events on the page object both for the request as well as for the response. So for monitoring requests, we listen to the request event and then we get a handle to the request object from which we can monitor the method, the URL and any data that was posted. Similar to the request event, we can listen to the response event and then we can access both the request, for example, its URL and anything on the response, for example, the HTTP status code. Now, if we run this, we can see the post network request to the application endpoint and we can also see the network response with the status code of 400 indicating an invalid request. Now, monitoring is passive and the objective is to help you debug network issues in your application with simple logging. Now beyond passive monitoring, we can actively change the request or the response as seen by the web application by using interception provided by the page.route function. So we set up a route for any endpoint ending with API slash actions and then we get a handle to the route as well as the request. Now we can use routing for monitoring as well. For example, we can log out the data posted by the web application. Now when you set up a route, the web application pauses till you determine the fate of the network call by using methods on the route object. You can use a bot to simulate a network error or you can let the network call proceed to the server as is by using the continue method. Now if you run this code, everything will proceed as expected and we get to see the request data that is posted on the console. Now the continue method also allows us to modify the request before it is sent to the server. For example, we can change the data that is posted to provide a valid key which in our case is Playwright to the server. And now when we run the application, even though the web application posted an empty string, we send the server the correct key which then responds with a valid response that gets rendered to the UI. Now beyond intercepting the network requests, the route method can also be used to completely mock out the server by providing a mock response for a given request. So for mocking, we start out with the same route function, but instead of continuing with the modified request, we will use the route object to fulfill with a mocked response. With fulfill, we get complete control over the response that the web application will see. Here we set the status code to 200, set the content type of the response as application JSON, and provide a valid set of actions as the body of the response. As far as the web application is concerned, it will observe this response as something coming from the server even though it's coming from our automation code. Now if you go ahead and run this, you can see the application sees our mocked response. This allows us to modify the responses that the web application sees all from within our automation without having to modify any of the server code. Now one thing to note about page routes is that once added, they exist for the entire lifecycle of a page. So if you want to set up different mocks for different interactions, you can wrap your page construction into a utility function that does the customization for you. And now instead of getting the page directly from the context, you can use this utility method called getPage to create a new page for you with the mocks set up ready to go. Now let's look at how you can wait for a web application to make a network request. Now we already have this wait for selector after the click which ensures that this network call triggered by the click is completed and the response is rendered to the screen. Now instead of waiting for the selector, we can also wait for a response for a particular URL. In our case, we'll wait for a response from the API actions endpoint. 
Now we should start waiting for the response before we click the load button, otherwise the request response will have already happened and our program will be stuck waiting for a response. But if we move it before click, then the request never happens and the program gets stuck on waiting for a response. Fortunately, we can trigger both the setup on the wait for response and carry out the click in parallel and wait for both of them to resolve using promise.all. And now the page is set up to wait for a network response but we don't wait for the response to happen and then we click on the load button and using promise.all we wait for both of these interactions to resolve. And now if you go ahead and run this, everything still works as expected but instead of waiting for the message to appear, we're actively waiting for the network request to resolve. And that's all for this lesson on handling network requests and responses in Playwright. You've learned monitoring, intercepting, mocking and waiting. Smash that like button and subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you in the next one.